We have come to join in worship and adore the Lord our God. Let us come in prayer, expecting God to speak His mighty word. All is vain unless the Spirit of the Holy One comes down. Christians pray and holy manna will be showered all around. See them gather all around you, those he bought at such a cost. See the weary, see the hurting, see the lonely, see the lost. Be his hand and touch the needy, be his gospel, let it sound. Be body and sweet manna will be showered all around. Let us love our God supremely, let us love each other too. Let us care for all his people till our God makes all things new. Christ will call us home to heaven. At his banquet we'll sit down. Christ himself will rise and serve us living man of Himself will rise and serve us, living men all around. Our rock, our salvation, our glory, our refuge, all power belongs to you. When you speak, we will listen. When you call us, we will answer. When you give orders, we will obey. Our rock, our salvation, our glory, our refuge, all power belongs to you. Friends, let us worship God. Welcome to the Christ United Presbyterian Church in this mixed media approach to worship, we are indeed in the 21st century. And today, when we meet as a congregation after our worship service today, we hope to explore some ways to faithfully be the church in the 21st century. The challenges are many. Uh, society, with changes in society and culture, the challenges are many. But with God's help, filled with the Spirit, we can be the people God calls us to be, even in the sea, the midst of change. A reminder, again, about the congregational meeting today uh, to vote on the pastor's terms of call and to also hear from the different ministries in the life of the church. And uh, another reminder, if you don't have your elements for the celebration of the Lord's Supper, Please, at some point uh, between now and that time, uh, secure those elements so that you can join us in the interaction and sup with the Lord our God. Friends, let us continue in worship, hearing, Lord, you have the words, and they will know we are Christians by our love. of everlasting life, Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The precepts of the Lord are right, 
they glad in the heart. The command of the Lord is to be trusted. It gives light to the eyes. Lord, you have a word of everlasting life. Lord, you have a word of everlasting life. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. Lord, you have the words. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that our unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love. By our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Continue in worship, opening ourselves to God, trusting in the one who made us and redeemed us. We confess in the full confidence that we are heard. Silently, but with your eyes, follow me in the prayer of confession. God of our restoration, Whenever we come home to you, we realize how far we have strayed and how much we have forgotten of your law and your love. We have not loved you with our whole hearts or loved our neighbors as ourselves. Forgive us, heal us, and restore us to our relationship with you through Jesus Christ in whom we trust. Amen. We pray silently, communicating with God as we need to, as we feel called to, trusting in God's love.
God's word does not come to condemn us, but to make us wise, reviving our souls and rejoicing our hearts. God's word has been fulfilling among us in Jesus Christ who sets us free to live in accord with God's jubilee. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Good morning, church. Just to build on what was said and to provide details, the congregation, or congregational meeting today uh, will be take place five minutes after the worship service ends, uh, right on this same Zoom link, so you can just stay on. Uh, also in events, the Jazz on the Plaza series resumes on February 5th, but I should note that the time will be different. This will be from three to five. And now for our scripture reading. The Psalms are a collection of sacred songs or hymns. They are both in Jewish and Christian worship. The Psalms reflect our ability to be honest with God while trusting that the same honesty is okay. The Psalms have long been a source of strength and encouragement for the believer. Today's reading is Psalm 19. Heaven is declaring God's glory. The sky is proclaiming his handiwork. One day gushes the news to the next and one night informs another what needs to be known. Of course, there's no speech, no, no words. Their voices can't be heard, but their sound extends throughout the world. Their words reach the ends of the earth. God has made a tent in heaven for the sun. The sun is like a groom coming out of his honeymoon suite. Like a warrior, it thrills at running its course. It rises in one end of the sky. Its circuit is complete at the other. Nothing escapes its heat. The Lord's instruction is perfect, reviving one's very being. The Lord's laws are faithful, making naive people wise. The Lord's regulations are right, gladdening the heart. The Lord's commandments are pure, giving light to the eyes. Honoring the Lord is correct, lasting forever. The Lord's judgments are true. All of these are righteous. They are more desirable than gold, than tons of pure gold, and they are sweeter than honey even dripping off the honeycomb. No doubt about it, your servant is enlightened by them. There is great reward in keeping them. But can anyone know what they've accidentally done wrong? Clear me of any unknown sin and save your servant from willful sins. Don't let them rule me. Then I'll be completely blameless. I'll be innocent of great wrongdoing. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thank
Amen. Thank you for that offering, uh, BJ. As we continue in worship, uh, we look at Luke, the fourth chapter, verses 14 through uh, 21. To help us appreciate uh, this reading of Scripture, this reading from the Gospel of Luke, I want to start off by saying some of you may remember a commercial series from about a decade ago when the commercial featured the most interesting man in the world. Now, I didn't take the commercial series too seriously. I thought it was fun. I thought it was silly. And I I thought it was sort of like a spoof on uh, James Bond and silly things were said in the commercial series like, he was so interesting that even his mother tattooed his name on her arm. Just silly, just silly, just silly things. But I met a guy who reacted as if he took offense to the commercial series and he said, that's not my demographic. I'm not part of that, that demographic. I'm thinking about target audiences today, and I showed up this morning to tell you that make no mistake about it. Have no doubt in your mind that 
the words in the book that we call the Bible are written for you. The scriptures are written with you in mind. Have no doubt in your mind. Make no mistake about it. Now, Jesus is issues in a new age. Jesus makes all things new, even who is in and who is out. Jesus shares that it's not the rich or the powerful, but all of you. Jesus announces that true freedom does not consist in money or possessions, nor in the ability to do as one pleases, but participating in the announcement Jesus makes with the opening and closing of the scroll of Isaiah. Here's what happened. Here's what happened. And I'm reading from Luke, the fourth chapter, verses 14 through 21. Jesus opens from the scroll of Isaiah, reads from the scroll, and then closes the scroll and ha hands it back to the attendant. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news about him spread throughout the whole countryside. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. Jesus went to Nazareth, where he had been raised. On the Sabbath, he went to the synagogue, as he normally did, and stood up to read. The synagogue assistant gave him the scroll from the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the prisoners, and recovery of sight to the blind, to liberate the oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the synagogue assistant, and sat down. Every eye in the synagogue was fixed on him. He began to explain to them, today, this scripture has been fulfilled just as you heard it. Holy wisdom, holy word. So, this message is for us. This message is for the rest of us beyond the so-called 1%. I like how Jesus opens and closes the scroll, makes me think of how we open and close our laptops. The scroll was the medium at the time. Many of us access information through some sort of electronic device when we open and close machines, computers, phone applications. What are we consuming? What are we taking in? Is it good news? Is it bad news? Does it have anything to do with the world that Jesus ushers in for all of us to be a part of? Is there, is there the urgency that we see in our passage from the Gospel of Luke today? Uh, my pastor, the man I consider to be my pastor, still consider him to be my pastor, is really cynical. He lives on the border between the U.S. and Canada, and he just, he's so cynical all the time, sometimes it's difficult to speak with him. And uh, he's cynical, especially when it comes to conversations about the church or conversations about the faith. And so I asked him, do you still believe? And he said to me that the words of the prophets and the words of Jesus still connect with him, still speak to him. Today we have a reading from the prophet Isaiah. 
He reads in the power of the Spirit. He enters and engages the culture with all of its norms, comes into the synagogue, does with what is expected, and takes them to the next level, talking about the good news for the rest of us, the poor, the prisoner, the blind, the oppressed, all people, people long silence, people long without a voice at the table. May all of us hear Jesus. He speaks to us. He is here for us. Now, back in the 15th century, and I'm glad that uh, we have a former uh, history major with us today. He now majors in geography. But uh, he remembers how the Gutenberg press in the 15th century revolutionized the world of print. The printing press enabled mass production of uniform printed products such as books, newspapers, pamphlets, and more. The Gutenberg press la left a lasting impression on society and vastly improved how books are produced. Now, the invention allowed for books to be printed in a timely manner and at low cost. A long way from the hand-copied scroll, we have the ability and the access to the words meant for us to live. Now, admittedly, I don't read as much as I used to. I find reading an inconvenience. I have to have the lighting right. I have to find my readers or my glasses. I have to make sure there's not a football game on. So reading, I don't always have what I need with me to read efficiently. But what we are talking about today, what we are talking about in terms of access to Jesus' announcement, we have everything we need. We have the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. We have open hearts and open minds. We have all sorts of medium and media available at our fingertips right before our eyes, and if we're not seeing, we can hear them in all sorts of different ways. We have everything we need to appreciate the announcement that is for all of humanity, especially voices long silenced, the prisoner, the poor, the captive, the oppressed. We have everything we need to consume this announcement, let us embrace this announcement, let us hear this announcement, let us share this announcement with others, let us live into the announcement, let our lives be the announcement that Jesus proclaims good news for all people about God's love in the midst of all the noise of the media and voices in our lives. Hear the announcement that Jesus proclaims in our scripture today, he has come to proclaim release to the captives, good news for all people, regardless what, of what holds us captive. This announcement, make no, to, no doubt about it, no mistake about it, this good news, Jesus' love, the power and presence of the Holy Spirit is for each and every one of us. Amen. We continue in worship in a posture of prayer. Let us pray. With our whole hearts, we praise you, Lord. We lift up our alleluias as people who gather to sing and proclaim, as people who gather to confess and to remember your redeeming work, as people who gather to tell of your mighty works of your faithfulness and your grace. 
All glory belongs to you, God. You are gracious and compassionate. You provide for us all we need, remembering your promise to hear when, you, when we call, to answer when we knock, to reveal yourself when we seek you. You have revealed your power to us in many ways. You heal the sick, you calm the frightened, you bring peace to the grieving, you change the course of our lives. We ask that you reveal your power again today for those on our hearts and our minds. We remember the Shade family as they mourn their loss. Lord God, in your time, have mercy. We lift names to you, Lord, other names, hear them. To you, they are much more than names. They are your precious children. They are parents, sisters, brothers, children, bosses, employees, aunts, uncles. They are yours. You know every detail of their lives. You speak to them through the presence of the Spirit and the, and the writ of Scripture. You know the detail of their lives far better than we do. You know their needs. We can trust you with our prayers, not only because we know you have the power to answer, but because we have seen that you are faithful and just. The promises we claim today are the same as those your people have claimed across generations. Through your Son, you have redeemed your people. You bring beauty and good from what we in our brokenness and ignorance have intended for evil. And in time, you will redeem the world, bringing, in, bringing an end to death and beginning and the beginning of an eternity of worship when every tribe, tongue, and nation will sing songs of praise. Until then we wait, help us not to spend our days looking up at the sky, send your spirit that we might see the world as you do. Fill us with your compassion for those in need of shelter, of a friend, or an advocate. Send us to the brokenhearted, the discarded, and those who are hungry for transformation only you can bring. While our hearts cry, come, Lord Jesus, let our hands reveal your presence and the world we inhabit. We ask these things in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying together as we say together with strength, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Friends, 
At this table, we acknowledge that the mystery is bigger than we are and that we want fellowship with this mystery. So we come to this table, those who have much faith in those who would like to have more, those who have been here often and those who have not been here for a while, those who have tried to follow Jesus and those who have failed. Come, engage the mystery of God and community at this table. Share with me in the great prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, O God, for you have brought forth bread from the earth. Blessed are you, O God, for you have created the fruit of the vine. In the beginning you watered the earth that man and woman might have food and drink. You gave to your servant Sarah bread to strengthen her family on their journey and wine to make them glad. You called Moses and his people out of bondage and refreshed them with food in the wilderness. You gave Mary and Jesus their daily bread to share. And here at your table you offer us bread and wine for the journey to nourish us as sons and daughters. And so with all our sisters and brothers before us and beside us, we praise you from our hearts for your unending greatness. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it, saying to the disciples, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. And in the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of this cup, do this in remembrance of me. Friends, Every time we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Yes, we are included at the table with the Lord our God. The bread of life. We are so much a part of the ministry that we take and eat. Jesus issues in an era where all things are made new. Let us drink. Let us pray. Lord, you have put gladness in our hearts. You have satisfied our hunger with good things. 
In giving all, you have not withheld from us your own dear Son, your very self. How can we withhold anything from you, our Lord and our God? Renew us day by day with the gift of your Spirit, that we may give ourselves completely to your service and walk with joy in the footsteps of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Uh, friends, if you did not hear the sad news of Mercedes Shade going on to glory, she has passed away, and in that the church is closed right now, the plan is an interment at Miramar. The date has not been announced yet. The application has been filed, and we're waiting for a date on that date, uh, all will be invited to gather at Miramar. And at a time when it is deemed safe by the leadership of the church, we plan at this point to have a service here. Uh, Marcy Shade, may she rest in peace and rise in glory. As we go to live the words that we have read and shared at this table, the Lord bless and keep you. The Lord be kind and gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>